Here are 10 top tips for the superb Capture One 12. Though I have presented these tips for Capture One 12, many of them will work for previous versions. If you would like to try Capture One 12, and I really do recommend it, then check in the YouTube description for links and a 10% discount code. The first thing that I'm going to show you is a little trick with the radial mask. Let's get started. In the Layers dialog, click and hold down on the paintbrush, then select Draw Radial Gradient Mask. Or if you prefer, you could just press the shortcut key T. Then just click and drag to draw a mask. And there it is. I think I'll just center this one. Press M to view the mask. And as you can see, the mask is on the outside of our selected area, with the red indicating the mask where any adjustments will happen. Now, here is the little tip. If you grab the inner ring and drag it all the way past the outer ring, then it reverses the mask. Let's just do a quick resize. There we go. Or you can drag the outer ring to the inside. And again, outer ring, inside, it reverses the mask. That just saves you having to right click on the layer and select invert mask. That's the standard way. We can just drag and drag and we have our inverted mask. And of course we can continue to refine the mask as we normally would. It's so quick and easy. Now if we delete our mask, select it and hit the minus to delete. Okay, while we're here, we may as well have a look at a few more radial mask operations. Normally, when you create a mask, you could control the width and the height. But if you hold down shift while creating the mask, you get a uniform mask. The width and the height are fixed, which is really handy if you want to mask off a circular area like a face or want to make a vignette effect. Okay, let's just get rid of that and do it again. Shift, drag out for a uniform mask. And if you let go of shift, you can continue to resize the mask as normal. Normally the mask is created from the center, but if we hold down Alt whilst creating our radial mask, the mask is created from the corner. So normal from the center and press Alt to create a mask from the corner. We can combine these if we hold Shift and Alt whilst creating the mask, we get a uniform mask from the corner. Both settings are applied together. There we go, radial mask controls. Okay, now a little bit on moving masks. Normally, you can't select outside of the mask to move it. If you do try to do this, you end up just creating a new mask. You select inside to move the mask, or select outside to create a new mask. But if you hold down control, you get to the crosshair and you can move your mask from anywhere within the image. You can move your mask by selecting outside rather than inside. You see, not on the inside, but on the outside. On slower machines, you may find that certain operations, such as preview generation or changing adjustments, are quite slow. Now, this can be improved somewhat there is a way to help to reduce the load on the system. And that is by changing the size of Capture One's previews. We can set the size of Capture One's preview files, which it uses for rendering and display. The preview is rendered all of the time whilst you're making your adjustments. So if we can reduce the preview image size, then it should render them more quickly and speed up file access. All we have to do is select Edit, then select Preferences, and on the Image tab, select Preview Image Size. Now I've got a 1920 pixel width monitor, but I've set my actual preview size to 1440. I've set it to 1440 because 1440 is a size quite close to the size of my preview window. So I should achieve maximum rendering speed while still retaining full resolution. As my preview size is close to my preview window size, I shouldn't notice any drop. I could even set it to 640. That would definitely give me the most speed, but it wouldn't give me a one-to-one -one preview. My best size is 1440. So I recommend you set your preview size 
to a size which is close to or just a bit larger than your preview window size. Now, there is a really easy way of finding the size of your preview window. First, you take a screenshot of your display. You'll need to find the method for your system. On Windows, all I have to do is press Print Screen. That will send a screen grab to the clipboard. Then I need to just start some sort of graphic program. In my case, I will start Affinity Photo. You could use Paint or Photoshop. Now I'm ready to find out my viewer screen size. All I have to do is select File and New from Clipboard. And here I have a screenshot of my Capture One workspace. I'll just do a quick check. Here we go. Resize document and there's my resolution. It's fine. Now all I have to do is select my rectangular marquee tool. Start it at the top left hand corner. Just make sure I can see my information. Now just select the area of the preview window with my marquee tool and I can see in the transform window that my size is 1283 by 856. Now I'll just quickly write that down for use in a moment. Now I can just exit Affinity Photo. Now I just go back to Edit and Preferences. Select the Image tab. As you can see, the closest one is 1280. And I could probably get away with using this. 1280 is very close to the preview window width that I measured. But because I want to guarantee a 1 to 1 pixel resolution, I'm going to choose 1440. I want to make sure that the preview window is not skipping pixels. OK, let's quit out of here. Now the previews that are generated will be the size or close to the size of my preview window. And I know I will be operating at maximum efficiency. My preview generation should be quicker when importing images. They should take less disk space and I should have a nice one-to-one -one display. Great! At the moment, Capture One doesn't seem to have a key to bring up a full screen preview but it does have something close that we can tinker with. If we select view and slideshow, then here is a slideshow where we can go forwards or backwards through our images and we can view them for a while, which is very nice. Let's just shut the slideshow down and we'll set the slideshow to start on the key of our choice. So if we go into edit and edit keyboard shortcuts, then type slide into the search box. Up comes slideshow. We click this little box and press the key of our choice. I'm going to use F, which is used by pick focus point at the moment, which I don't mind overriding as I very rarely pick a focus point and I can always use the menu if I need to. Not a problem. I'm going to use F for full screen. You could use S for screen, I suppose. Now we just click close and when I hit F, up pops the slideshow. The only problem with the slideshow is that after a couple of seconds, it automatically advances to the next image. But what you can do is go into the slideshow tools here and change the display time. If I just set it to default, you can see that after five seconds, it would automatically advance to the next image as it's doing right now. If we set it to 20 seconds, then that gives us enough time. I think 20 seconds is plenty of time to have a quick preview of the image before we exit the slideshow. Just escape out of there. And now I have a full screen preview using the slideshow. And of course it will have all of these slideshow controls. I just press F and I have a full screen preview. Hey. It will roll over after 20 seconds, but it will give me time to preview the image and I can always pause it on the slideshow controls. So that's turning the slideshow into an instant preview. I'm going to show you now how to change specific shades of a color. We are going to use the color editor to make the dark shades of a color into one color and then the light shades of a color into another color. This is just to show how finely you can control color with the color editor. 
First select our colour tab, make sure in the colour editor we're on advanced. Then select the picker and we'll first select the very light colours. We have to start somewhere, so that little dot represents the colour we've picked. Now I want to reduce the smoothness to zero to give me greater control. I'll just view the colour range. As you can see at the moment we're selecting nearly all of the colours in the uh, petals. But if I bring this up to omit the lighter shades of the selection and bring this one down to omit the darker shades of the colour. Now we've targeted these lighter colours. As you can see, the top and bottom here control the luminance and the sides here control the hue. So if we bring the sides in like so, we can reduce the hue range too. So now we're not uh, affecting as much of the background. Now, if I want to, I can just change the hue. We'll do bright green for demonstration purposes. If we turn off selected color range, as you can see that by selecting a shade range of a color, I've managed to change just a part of the petals from orange to green. And of course, we can go in and do this again. If we wanted to, we can make the darker parts of the flower another color. Something tasteful, I think. So, just to select our colour, I'll select this orange here. Then turn on View Selected Colour Range. Again, reduce the smoothness. Reduce the Light Shade Range. And reduce the Dark Shade Range. Actually, I want all of the dark. Then narrow down the colour range, one side, then the other. You can see we're targeting the orange and emitting more and more of the rest of the colour. Now, for this example, we'll move the hue all the way over to the reds. And for fun, bring down the lightness just a tad. And then, unselect view selected colour range. Now we have a really mad multicoloured flower. But I think it shows how you can target colours extremely finely with Capture One. If you don't like the base characteristics of your photographs, as applied by Capture One on import. If you don't like, say, the default sharpening or the default noise reduction that are applied when you import images into Capture One, then you can change it. Having used Lightroom or an equivalent program, some people don't like the default settings that Capture One applies when importing images. Capture One applies its own sharpening, noise reduction and tone curve, but you actually have complete control over this. You can actually set your own defaults for any import for any camera you have. I have this image selected and I know it's a file from an A6300. I can go in and make all the defaults for the A6300 exactly how I want them. So I'll start by selecting the colour tab, then go into base characteristics. Now we can set these. Here where it says Sony A6000 generic is the default colour profile. I'm not going to change that, but you could. We're going to go here and change the base curve. The film standard curve gives you a more film-like photograph and they do look really nice. But they're not everyone's cup of tea so we could change it to linear response. Now we have a flat curve. The flat curve is just applied to this one photograph. But if we click the three dots here we can select save as defaults for A6300. Then up pops this dialog box which allows you to apply this setting to all of your selected images, and not just new ones that are being imported. I normally just hit apply here. Now the linear curve is set for all future imports. So that was the linear response. That will give us a nice even tone on import, which is more like other applications. The next thing to do is go into the sharpening tab or the detail tab and select the default sharpening you would like. Now I personally have my own default settings for sharpening from my A6300. So let's just have a little play, set it to um, some defaults. Actually let's set everything to zero, to no sharpening at all. And also get rid of all noise reduction. Now we've set our sharpen but now we'd like to set it as default for the A6300 for instance. So same again, set as defaults and apply. Then do the same for the noise reduction, here we go. And then apply. Now we have our import characteristics set, excellent. 
So by default, now when I import files from my A6300, I will have a flat tone curve and no sharpening or noise reduction. Capture One will not be applying these for me, so I have a nice base image to start my edits. Right, let's see this in action. Let's import some images. Here we are, selecting for Christmas. Select these, import seven images. Let Capture One get on with its job of importing. This shouldn't take too long. It's just a few raw images from an A6300. Now, when we take a look at these new images that have been imported, now if we select one and look at our base characteristics, there it is. For our A6300, we have a linear response curve. And if we go and check the details tab, we have no sharpening or noise reduction. Now we're ready to adjust the image to our heart's content. In this tip, I'll show you a nice quick way to produce the orange and teal look. It's a very popular look, and this method could be used to produce any colour combinations that you want. So, the first thing we have to do is go to the colour editor, and in the advanced tab, select our colour picker, then select our first colour. I think I'll make these signets more orange as that would be more natural. Make sure the whole colour range is selected. I want these ready orange colours. And just select View Selected Colour Range. Now all the water has gone black and white, so I can see the colours I've selected. The next step is to turn these colours here we've selected more orange. Turn all the colours back on. Now just click on the three dots here. Select Create Mask Layer from Selection. And that will create as a layer. If we go to our layers, this layer now contains a mask of the colour range we selected. So all we have to do now is go to our colour balance and selecting midtones, just move them over towards orange. Then move over to the shadows and select the correct amount of orange for the shadows. There we go. I think those midtones and shadows are fine. Now we have lovely, beautiful orange signets. So now we want to create the teal in our image. All we do is add a new layer by clicking the little plus here, then right click on the layer and copy mask from and select layer 1. Now our layer 2 contains the mask from layer 1. Next right click on layer 2 and select invert mask. If we just press M we can see we have a mask of everything but the signets. Then all we do is go down to our colours, and as they are dark colours, I'm going to move these shadows over towards teal. Very nice. There it is, we have our effect. As you can see, it's orange and teal. If we switch off our orange layer, the orange disappears. And if we switch off our teal layer, the teal disappears. And the really nice thing is, because the orange and teal are on separate layers, we have control over the effect. Just by playing with the layer's opacity, we have complete control of the impact of either the teal or the orange separately. And that's a quick and effective method of producing the orange and teal look with Capture One. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to create a pretty coloured vignette. So to start us off, I'll use shortcut T to create a radial gradient. Then just click and stretch out my radial gradient like so, and press M so that I can see where the mask is being applied. Press M again to get rid of the mask. So there's our nice radial gradient, and now we're ready to make some adjustments. I'll start by bringing down just the exposure quite a bit for this effect and we have a vignette. At the moment it's just a very standard vignette with no colour. If we go over to the colour tab and select the master colour in our colour balance dialog, now we can instantly make the vignette any colour we like. So we can make it blue or red or give it a yellow tint or make it a nice teal colour. And if we want to make the colour more pronounced, all we have to do is go into the three-way and set the midtones, shadows and highlights to the same colour as the master. 
And now by setting all of the zones in the colour balance tool we have a lovely teal vignette. Very nice. Now if we just turn off the master, in fact just reset the master by clicking on the centre. Now it's just set in the shadow midtones and highlights. We could actually have a different colour in the highlights or a different colour in the midtones. So our vignette has orangey midtones like so and teal shadows. And in the exposure tab we can make it as dark as we like. And we can even go in and press T again to bring the mask back up and we can adjust the shape. We can make the vignette wider if we like or taller. We can make it softer like so. We can use the exposure tab to make the effect less pronounced like so. Or we can reduce the effect in the layers tab as each layer has its own opacity. So we can just reduce the opacity here. And that is how you create a beautiful coloured vignette in Capture 112. Fantastic! Here we have a very handy little tip for cropping. Let's start by selecting our crop tool. Sometimes it's a bit tricky to grab here in the corners. It can be quite hard to see the grab point and this can make it a little bit of a problem selecting the grab point. But luckily there's a really easy way to remedy this in the settings. All we have to do is go to edit and preferences then select the crop tab and then here where it says show frame just click on the roll down and select always. Just get rid of that and as you can see now we have a frame. If we go back to pan and go back to crop we can see the whole frame including the corners. It just makes Capture One even more of a pleasure to use. Now quite often we would like to quickly access our images for selection so we need to hide the viewer. There are a couple of ways to do this. You can slide the edge of the panel across to show the library and then move it back or you can press Ctrl Alt and V to hide the viewer and then Ctrl Alt and V again to bring it back. But that always seems a little cumbersome to me but what I do to make things much more convenient I remap the keyboard so instead of pressing Ctrl Alt and V all I have to do is quickly press the tilde key which is the key next to the one on the top row of your keyboard. It's really easy select edit and edit keyboard shortcuts then in the search box I type view er like so and the keys associated with the word viewer are listed. Here it is viewer so I just select inside of the box here and press the tilde key. If you do see this message about creating a custom keyboard set then don't worry about it. All you have to do is hit duplicate. Then enter a name for the new keyboard set, your personal keyboard set and hit OK. Now just search for viewer again. Viewer. Now when we try to change the key just click on the box and press the tilde key. It will say OEM8 and we just hit close. We can now just press the tilde key, press it again and with a single key press we can now hide our viewer and view our library which is a lot quicker than having to select and drag this across and then drag it back each time or having to press Control, Alt and V every time. I now have a single key where my hand rests to toggle the viewer. In this top tip I'm going to show you how you can use the advanced colour editor to change the colour of any single colour into any other colour. Let's pick a colour. This pink tongue will do nicely. We'll vastly change its colour. In the advanced tab of our colour editor select the picker and then select the colour we wish to change. Now we have our pink tongue selected. Make sure all of the pink is selected and now all we have to do to change the colour is just to move the hue across and already we've got the tongue to a nice salmon colour. But now here's the trick. If we do a second selection in roughly the same place we get a new selection of the changed colour. 
Now when we come to actually changing the hue of this colour, it will change the colour again. And we can use this method multiple times until we reach the colour that we desire. We can radically change the colours. Here we've actually changed the colour from a nice pink to a disgusting sickly green. Let's take a look. Before, after, before and after. And by turning them off, you can see it goes from one colour to the next to the next, down to the base colour. So there it is. By repeatedly targeting the same area, you can change one colour into any other colour you like. All down to the power of the amazing Capture One colour editor. Brilliant! And my final tip for this video is, and it's probably the most important tip of all, if you do follow this very important top tip, you will improve your Capture One experience much more than following any of the other tips in the whole of this video. Here it is, the final tip for this video. Get yourself a solid state drive. With an SSD installed, Capture One will boot faster. All filing operations will be much, much quicker. Importing, browsing, editing and exporting will be quick and slick. Using an SSD is not only the best way of improving Capture One, but any file-hungry software. So if you can, get hold of one and watch Capture One fly.